What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the walkthrough. In this episode, we're going to take on what is the last area of the game. Um, and to get there, we need to head past here, which is accessible after we killed Romina. And so what this event is going to do is it's going to allow us access to this last area. And it will pretty much end most, if not all, of the NPC quest lines. So if you're still missing some of the steps, um, I'd suggest going back and handling those before you do this. This is kind of a point of no return here. So we can examine the ceiling tree. And since we um, beat Mesmer, we uh, have the materials required to burn the ceiling tree. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, you have to do this to progress. You do not have a choice. All right, so now that we did that, uh, what was or pre previously veiled behind shadow is now unveiled since we burned the ceiling tree. And we have, uh, this is Inner Ilum, which is going to be the final area of the game. So uh, right there, we got a Sight of Grace. Right now, we can't travel, but if we rest at this Sight of Grace, we can travel again. And behind us, we got a Somber Nine. So let's go ahead and rest because we are going to travel. Once you rest at this site of grace, you can travel again. So the first thing we're going to do is head over here to the Temple Town Ruins because now that we have uh, burned the ceiling tree and unveiled Inner Ilum, um, we can uh, get the um, the item that is locked behind one of the paintings that we found. It's actually the first painting we found. I think we got it in like the first episode, but you can't get it. You can't obtain it until now after you reveal Inner Ilum because if you look at the inventory... Uh, if we, let's, let's take a look at the painting. Um, see, it reveals, you know, it looks, you, you see the actual structure because before it was veiled in shadow. But now that the actual structure is visible, we can go to the spot and claim our rewards. That's what we're going to do right here. So to do that, we're going over to where the Spirit Spring Jump is. And there is a mausoleum up here. We did the mausoleum earlier in this playthrough. Up all the way up. Then where we're headed, it's like right, right about here. down here right around here is the artist there he is so this is the painting we have the view now we can pick up the spiral tree seal which enhances the uh, spiral based incantations okay the next thing we're going to do is hop over here to great bridge north 
because there's actually a revered spirit ash that I passed up before way earlier in this playthrough um, in the ailing village. It's over here to the side. And I just straight up passed it. And so what I did was I left a comment on the video so people who are watching it now uh, can can get it at that time instead of passing it up like like I did. But that's Revered Spirit Ash. We're going to need that to fully upgrade. Just want to pick that up real quick. And that's the only one that I didn't get. Earlier in the walkthrough. Soon as I can pull up my map, we're going to warp. But make sure you grab that. And again, hopefully, uh, if you did that after I left the note, hopefully you saw the note. I put it in a, in a uh, pinned comment. Hopefully you saw that and were able to grab it at that time. So you don't need to do that if you've already got it. So here we are at Ener Illum. Okay, so. Over there is the Rao Ancient Ruins. That's where we fought Romina. Very cool to see how this all ties together. And then this is Belly Rat. So if you remember, we um, after we fought the Dancing Lion and Belly, Belly Rat, we went up that pathway and we got to that door that was blocked by the uh, thorns. So now those those thorns are gone. And um, I'll show you that spot. Because when, when, when you kill Romina, it, it transports you here. These guys are powerful, but uh, I got them mostly with my bow. Actually, while I'm doing this, I'm going to check to see how many arrows I got. I got probably enough. I got 79 in storage. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, we're going to be using our arrows at a few points uh, as well, because there's a lot of these horned warriors. So in here, you've got another side of grace. Here's the progression path, so we're going to do that in just a bit. So I mentioned, you know, when after, after we beat the uh, the Dancing Lion, or the Divine Beast, whatever he's called, um, there was a path from Belly Rat. So that path, if you go here and ride this elevator down, it's going to take you back to Belly Rat, back to where we fought the Dancing Lion. I mean, I'm not going to take the elevator down, but uh, that's where this elevator will take you. Picked up some Mesmer Fire Grease. Then what we're going to do is go up these stairs. Very somber smithing stone. And this area is not that big. There are some powerful enemies. But as far as, you know, being a dungeon is concerned, it's, it's on the smaller side. Okay, so now we're going to head southwest to the progression path. There's an item over here. It's just a broken rune. There's a bridge right there. It's broken, but you can hop over it to get there. We're going to go through this room first to the right. There's a couple of horns sitting here. And then you can hop over this little route to go up here. It's going to be a rune arc and another enemy up here. Now you could drop down. We're going to get there eventually. For now, we're going to go back down. So grab the rune arc, go back down. And we're going to drop in this hole with the tree trunk. And there's a bunch of fly people. We're going to get the fly people. And then here we have two revered spirit ashes. So there are multiple ways of getting here. The way that I'm choosing to do it is by dropping down. But there's also stairs. It's going to take us back up to where we were just looking at. Um, there's a platform with a bunch of enemies and a larger one as well. All right. So got some more fly people. Oh, that one grabbed me. Oh, well. 
But take, go, going this way by dropping down there is just the way that makes the most sense to me as far as just making one loop instead of having to backtrack a bunch of times. All right, so up on this route, we got red flesh mushrooms. Around this way. White flesh mushrooms. And according to the lore, the these fly people were actually once horn sent. But they caught some disease and it transformed them into bugs. Alright, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to go up the stairs. There's gonna be a bunch of enemies up here, including the 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 big guy. And the big guy actually is going to drop another revered spirit ash. Keep your distance for that fire attack, but we did a special couple hits. Got him. Not too bad. Got a revered spirit ash. Over here in this corner, we got a lightning proof pickled liver. And over here, there's going to be a bunch of enemies. So this, this door connects back there. This is where we went to the tree trunk and where we dropped down. So just to tie it all together. Got a bunch of horn scent enemies over here. Fortunately, they're not too powerful, so not too big a deal to take them all out. Behind all of them, we've got some budding horns. Now we're going to go up stairs, a couple more enemies, They're being annoying. Okay, so that's the progression path and there's a big boy over there. That guy is tough to kill. Before we fight him, we are going to drop down here. Then go this way to the northeast. We're basically taking this tree branch all the way. And here we can hop off for a spell. The Spira. So from here, we can drop down back onto the tree branches. It's going to pop us back out to where we just were before. First, we're going to turn back and get calling finger remedy and then go down this branch to the south hop over and this is where we were before all right so now we're ready to face this guy he is big and beefy he's he is stronger than the ones we faced before i'll leave it at that so now that he's got our attention he fight he uh fires lightning i'm just gonna spam him with arrows until he gets close you see, he's got more HP than the others. He's got more attacks. And I was lucky to dodge that whole combo, but he's got a little bit of HP left, so took him out. Yeah, he took a bunch of arrows first. It's not like the other ones where we could just kill him with arrows before he gets to us. Um, he is um, stronger than that. All right, so now we're going to head up this set of stairs. Dragon Bull Grease. So you want to run full speed because this thing's going to be casting. Ah, he got me. I'm going to have to heal and try again. So annoying. That's This is the Spear spell that we just picked up, by the way. All right. Try that again. All right, run full speed. There we go. Still kind of can be a pain to dodge. But once you get to him, you can kill him. And there's another one of these on these stairs up there. You see him on the roof. So you're going to want to top off your health again. And at the top of these stairs, we're going to get a grace. So just make sure you get to the top.
Very annoying. I'm gonna get behind this pillar and heal up. And get this item. Golden bolts. Through these doors is our grace. So we could get that enemy up top, but we're gonna do that later. All right, so we got a Skadget Tree Fragment, Nicholas Cross. I abandoned here all my fears. I'm gonna rest at this one to get my healing back. I used a bunch of it just there. So now we can upgrade our Skadget Tree Blessing to level 19. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head back to where we came from. So again, run. We're going to kill this guy and then go to our left. And there's a secret pathway that we're going to go down. We came out. Go this way down these stairs. Yes, by now, I've, I have learned that the cor correct pronunciation is uh, shadow tree fragments. But... Old habits die hard, unfortunately, so I still call them Skadu Tree Fragments by instinct. Alright, got the Inquisitor Ashes. So now we can go over here, and this is super hard to find, but right here you can drop down on these stairs. Let's just run and hop over. Pick up this item. Fireproof Pickled Liver. Up here. This is a large parkour section, so just be wary. There's a, some difficult jumps we're going to have to make, so just kind of scoot over off this edge here. And then drop down to these arches. So line yourself up and then just drop. So there's a little gap in this arch, so you're going to have to run and jump over. Get this item on the other side. Holy proof pickled liver, and then now we're going to drop down to the gap. Up over here. This is some smithing stones. Go. So now line yourself up. Jump over. Go to the right, all the way to the top. Lord Soren's bolts. So jump over here. In this direction. Then you're going to drop again right here on these stairs. There's an enemy right here, so be careful. Roll back, and then... Alright, so first we're going to go up for an item. Somber 5, and then we're going to go down for another item. And this part is really tricky. So the way forward is actually through this window. It looks like it's a hard jump to make, but really all you have to do is sprint full speed at it and jump over. So line yourself up, sprint, and then jump. So make sure you're lined up with this window. Just straight line, run, and then jump. And you should land right here. Super sketchy, but it works. All right. So here we're going to have some enemies. There's a giant scorpion that's going to drop down. See him? Let him drop. And this is the, the big version of the scorpions. And over here we have a Skadu Tree Fragment. And so this is an elevator up here. If you take this, it'll take you back to Ener Ilum. So right now, we've technically dropped all the way down back to Bellurat. This is a portion of Bellurat that we hadn't been able to get to before. And you're going to see more of that later in just a bit. But yeah, up there is Ener Ilum. And this is the elevator back up if you want to go there. But there is stuff yet, more stuff yet that we want to get um, by going further down. So we're going to do that. So take this elevator. There's going to be another Horned Warrior that we're going to fight. 
to get my bow ready since I use this mainly to kill the horned warriors. Nope, no, those are just the uh, the horn scent. My bad. The horned warriors, a little bit further ahead. Yeah, these guys are easier to kill. Here's the Horned Warrior. Great sword variety. I'm going to stand back and snipe him. Got him. He did get me with his range attack, but that's fine. Much easier to take him out from afar. All right, now we're going to go all the way down another elevator. This place is going to look familiar because off to our side here, this is the poison swamp we were in like when we when we explored the main dungeon and I remember uh Pointing up, saying, "Hey, there's there's a bridge here that you can't get to till later." Well, now here we are. You can't get to. It turns out you can't get get here until the very end of the game. But uh, you open up these doors. And we get ourselves a new twin blade, the Euporia. So that noise it makes kind of uh, makes you think that it's a a legendary weapon. I'm going to work back to the spiral rise. So the Euphoria is, is a um, interesting weapon. You use it and what it does, I don't have the faith to use it, but um, what it does is the more you use it, it like cleanses itself. And then the more you use it and the more that it, um, uh, the luster is restored, I guess is what the description says. The more that the luster is uh, restored, it powers up the special attack. But then once you use the special attack, it then... Uh, uses up the luster and you have to re luster it again to, to get the max power from it. So, but the max power attack is very strong. So, uh, it could be good for you to use if you have the stats and want to check it out. So, all right. Um, so now what we're going to do, let's see, do I have, yeah, we're going to go up the stairs, hop out. There's going to be a roof where that caster was before. Take him out. All right, turn this way to the southwest. And we're going to hop along the roofs. So there's going to be some birds. Watch out for them. And these birds can cast uh, projectiles. Just be careful. Get this one's attention. That's their projectile attack. I'm going to hide from it. It is very strong, actually. If it hits you in full force, it's going to do a lot of damage. Third one. There it is. Just hide from the... Just have, have some sort of barrier between you and the projectile. There you go. Turn back. Go up on this roof. Smithing stone eight. Seed this way. There's gonna be a couple more enemies. Another bird and a horn scent. And then turn back behind you for a revered spirit ash. And so you could go through here. I'm just gonna show you kind of the path to make sense of it. So you go up here, you see this, this rooftop area. So that is a tower up there. We're actually going to climb up that tower. We're going to go back down and climb up that tower and get some more loot. So you can, you, this is the progression route, but you miss a secret. So we're going to go get the secret area. The way that you get there is by on this set of stairs, you can look over and hop down to this set of stairs. 
turn back for an item for her intender in here got horned warrior ashes stanching boluses and neutralizing boluses another ladder for us to climb Up this ladder, there's going to be an item and then another ladder for us to climb. Then we're going to be at the top of that tower that I showed you earlier. We're going to be able to loop back around to where we were before. Before we drop down, we got a horned warrior here. So I'm going to take him out with my bow. No need to drop down and fight him. Not worth the risk. Now we can drop on this roof. And, um... So, yeah. Just to tie it all together. That, that pathway right here is where we popped out before. I showed you. We looked up there. So that's how, that's how this all goes together. So in this room, we have a Skadu Tree Fragment. To the left, we have some sun warmth stones. Now we're going to hook around, climb up the roof, hop through here. All right, to our right, we got a somber six. When you go down this elevator, take those guys out first. So that's that's the progression route. But down this elevator, we get some more goodies. So when you go down this elevator, face the door. There's a spot where you can drop down for an item. Right here, you see it coming up. Hop over. Get the grave bird helm. And then from here, you can drop all the way down to the floor. Just kind of scoot off the edge. So you land right here, you drop down again. Through here is going to be a Cursed Blade enemy, so just be prepared for that. Got my health topped off. This is going to be worth it, it's going to take us to a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. There he is. Oh, you got out of the way. Come on. Ah, he didn't knock down. Dang it. There we go, finally. All right, on these stairs. Got our somber ancient. And we're gonna go back to the elevator that we came down, go back up. Fill my flasks. And this guy is probably the toughest of the horned warriors. This this guy up here. Um, we can summon mimic for him, so we're going to, because this guy, I he is tough. He is the toughest one that we fought to date. So I'm gonna flask. Do all the buffs. Now he saw us. We got some wind attacks. We're killing him though, we get the great sword. 
They're pretty cool. But he is tough. You see, like, my my regular attacks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he just completely murdered me. And now, now Mimic goes in. Um, should have taken that slower. I could have used the bow, but the bow doesn't do very much damage to him. So I have quite a bit of backtracking to do, unfortunately, but... Yeah, I, I am kind of surprised they didn't put a Stake America there with how hard that guy is. Almost had ourselves a clean run through this place, but... Came up just short. I'm just going to run past all this stuff, which could be a mistake because these guys are going to try to shoot me. You see how much damage that does? But I'm in a hurry. Ain't nobody got time to fight all these guys again. Up, oh, the way forward is around that way, sadly. Got lucky with the dodge there. Yeah, this run back is not fun. <laughs> not at all. Honestly, the best way to approach this so you don't have to do this is if you run past him, there's another grace. And so if that way you can come back and fight him. If you die, you respawn kind of right, right behind him. That's what I would recommend doing for safety. You saw how, how powerful his attacks were. He took me out in like two or three hits. All right, Mimic. I want Mimic to lead the way. This is big tornado. Where is Mimic? Where'd he go? What the heck is he doing? Oh my gosh. That was too greedy. <laughs> that's that's funny. Oh. All right, and we're back. Third time's a charm. Or at least let's hope it is. I'm gonna try using the bow this time. I'm not sure how effective it's gonna be. Yeah, not very effective at all. Really, just gonna leave me open to his attacks because he moves faster and it doesn't do as much damage to him proportionally. Oh, while well, he's on me, mimic you do your do your thing to him. Oh, there we go, alley you. All right, there we go. Good riddance. For that, we get the Horned Warrior's Greatsword. And as I said, there's a grace right, right down here. They can theoretically just run past them, get the grace, come back and find them if you want. I was just overconfident.
And we have the final Scatty Tree Fragment. So at this grace, we should be able to level ourselves all the way up now. Scatty Tree Blessing, level 20. Spirit Ash Blessing, level 10. There we go. So that is the max. Um, the good thing is, is if you come back in New Game Plus, you don't have to find all the fragments again. You Your uh, level rolls over. So up here, we have another... You just call it a boss fight. We have our friend, or is she a friend? Lita. Okay, so she senses that we're after Mikola. So she wants to kill us now. So now, if you've done Ensbach's quest and Tialier's quest, well, there's Ensbach and there's Tialier, you can summon them for the for this fight. I would highly suggest summoning them. Um, because if you summon them now, this progresses their quest line. If you don't summon them now, it basically ends their quest line and they're not gonna be available later. So we're gonna summon both of them in. Um, if Tiali is not available for you, I would run back to St. Trina. I would talk to him, exhaust his dialogue, and then imbibe the nectar again. And then when you revive, talk to Tiali again. Just make sure that you are at the end of his dialogue. And then he should pop up here. You have to do that before this fight, though. So do not fight Leda until you've done that if Tiali is not available for you. If you've done everything we've done for Ansbach so far, he should be available to you. So now we can invade. And this is it. We're not only fighting Leda, we're fighting other NPCs as well. And I'll give a little bit more background um, on how this fight works after we're done here. So we'll be fighting um, Lita. We're also going to be fighting Dryleaf Dane. And we're also going to be fighting um, Freya. The Freya is going to spawn right here. She's the first one. And she only shows up if you've done her quest line. If you do not do her quest line, she does not appear in this fight. So who appears in this fight determined, or is, is determined by how you have done the quest lines in this game. So now Dryleaf Dane's in. Then after Dryleaf Dane is going to be, um, be Lita. There's Lita. And now Ansbox finally joining the party. So your your summons, if you choose to summon the NPCs, they don't join the fight right away. They kind of take their sweet time. By the time they show up, it's basically almost too late. So for that, we get Lita's sword. And so I said, as I said, uh, how this encounter plays out depends on what quest lines you've done or how you've done them. So since we did Freya's quest line, um, Freya was a part of that, uh, was one of the enemies we had to fight. Um, for more, if you tell more, put it behind you instead of what we did. We, we, we told him to, to stay sad or whatever it was, and then he went over and, and he died and we were able to get his armor earlier. Um, if you tell him to put it behind you, he is actually a part of this encounter, and then he, you don't get his armor until after this encounter, way later in the game. So what we did was he got the way we did it, we got his armor way earlier. Um, but if you tell him to put it behind you, he shows up in this. He's one of the the uh, the summons in this one for for um um for Lita, and then you fight him as part of this encounter. Also. If you did not summon Horn Scent for Mesmer, Horn Scent is one of the ones you have to fight here too. And then after this encounter, you'll get Horn Scent stuff. So we get all of Freya's stuff, her weapon and armor. Over here, we get Dane's footwork, which is another one of the like martial arts things you can equip. Goes along with the dry leaf arts that we got earlier. And over here on. Lita's body, we get her armor as well. So we got her sword right after the encounter. 
So as I said, you can fight more NPCs as part of that fight. So for example, if we did not summon Horn Scent, and if we chose the other dialogue option for more, then we would have been fighting Horn Scent and more as part of that as well. And you want to summon both of your friendly NPCs. Otherwise, their quest line effectively ends and they're not going to be available later. Now, they're going to be available for the final boss fight. Um, but we'll go through that probably in the next episode because we're going to fight the final boss in the final episode. Next episode. All right, so here we can talk to Ansbach. Just tarnished. That was an astounding battle, to be sure. Now, I suppose this leaves only one. But in truth, I cannot calm my quivering. Challenging a god is no small matter. And ask about Tialier and Moog. I'm afraid I underestimated the lad. Appearing frail in both body and mind, I presumed it'd be like to stumble upon the field of battle. What a fool I was. He serves another master, but Satyolier performed magnificently. Perhaps he too quivers with anticipation, as do we. Oh. Something you want to get off your chest? Well, you needn't worry. It was you, wasn't it? Who defeated Lord Moog. Uh, fear not. I bear no grudge against you. His eminence was felled in an honorable duel. And such are the risks of seeking lordship. Besides, what right have I to complain? I blame the enchantment more than anything. Righteous tarnished, we will have our victory. I swear upon my blood. All right, so even though he's loyal to Moog, he understands that we're the ones who killed Moog. But um, he doesn't hold it against us. He said that Moog died honorably. Up here at the top, this is the fog gate for the final boss. So do whatever you want to do at this side of grace. Use all of your runes. Level up. Do what you can, because this is it. This is it. So I'll pop a couple runes. I got to get like 60,000 more. Just in case that's not enough, I'm going to pop one more. Last level. We're going to finish at level 209. Okay. So... We're going to take on the final boss next time. So that's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, it's bittersweet. This journey is coming to an end. But uh, we still got one final boss to take down. And what an encounter it is. It is easily, the uh, without question, the most difficult fight in this game. So brace yourselves. It's going to be a good one. But it might take a while. We'll see. So appreciate y'all watching. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Take care, everybody.